Good day, everyone. Today is April the 11th, 2024. Well, we've gotten some more inflation data. We've gotten PPI. We have our CPI. We have our core numbers out. If you saw yesterday, I was quite busy in the, <laughs> in the Twitter stream with basically our thoughts. So you remember this range way back here in the beginning of 2024? So this whole range right there, you'll remember... It's like, okay, our rates ahead of themselves, we start breaking lower, higher for longer. We've been, I think, pretty obviously in the higher for longer camp. That's not been the question. The question has been the overall thesis that we have regarding structural inflation becoming more sticky for longer -er, or H4L, higher for longer plus. And I think that's sort of what I've slid into, right? So I've said I would need to see all of the data together. And when I look at all of the data together, and, and I think you've got to make the decisions in that Bayesian manner, as I was saying in the weekly note, you have to make a decision based on that, which is one binary event. You're putting together a, a host of factors. You're putting together an amalgam of data. And that's the way you make your decisions, right? And it's so that you know the kind of environment you are. And quite frankly, we're in for higher for longer plus camp now. We're not in the higher for longer, we're in the higher for longer. The only question I had in my mind after I looked at the data was, okay, how long does this go on? Stanley Drunken Miller, I always try to catch everything he says. He had an excellent interview. And it's like, yeah, something can bring an end to it, like a big crisis, financial crisis event, or God forbid, something, you know, a world crisis happening could definitely bring an end to it, <laughs> like could, could stop the sticky inflation that we have and and the god just the absolute disaster that is fiscal uh policy and as well all of the ideas being floated out there on the fiscal side are absolutely nightmarish you know the concept there there's not one economist of any political affiliation anywhere on either side i don't care who they are the, the number I, I think i saw Tex, uh, dallas texas hedge say this on um Twitter the other day. The number of economists in the world who believe that cutting the rate will fight inflation is exactly zero on planet Earth. So this whole idea is like, well, you know what we'll do? We'll just change the ship around and we'll get those rates down and make it affordable for everybody. In the midst of an inflationary spiral, that's how you accelerate inflation. You don't decrease it. And especially with the underpinnings of the reverse of globalization, right? That, that's, that's, you, you have to look at the structure you're on. It's not just like, well, back then rates were cheap and look at how great everything was. Yeah, with supply chains, what they were back in, you know, 2012, 2013, with 2014, with supply chains, what they were, with the ease of technology, with quite frankly, micro distortions happening throughout the economy because of ZERP. Yeah, you know, oh, wow, look at how wonderful the having a lower risk-free rate was. You can normalize higher rates. The United States enjoyed massive prosperity with rates rising and rising for 40 years from like 1941 to 1981. All right, so I'm sorry. I just heard some concepts. It was like, you know, everything will change once these rates can be forced back down to zero. It's like, What's that line from Jurassic Park? That is the dumbest idea I have heard in the long, sad history of dumb ideas. So the only question I have in my mind at this point is how long do we stay in higher for longer plus or higher -er for longer? -er? Um, you know, so first telling the story. Uh, I see some new and aspiring traders sort of making a mistake. If you're going to look at treasuries, don't look at TLT. I I'm telling you, even guys, this is just the, uh, well, it's actually... It's T-bond futures, but technically when you look at the underpinnings, it's sort of 20-year plus. Or even if you look at the ultra bond. Personally, I think this is the ultra bond or the, uh, the bond futures. Or TLT, uh, you know, because we try at GTC traders to sort of stay clean stocks, stock options, that sort of thing, ETFs. It's back-end hedge flow to guys that are trading the, who are like trading the ultra tens to the bond. Right, there's a spread relationship there that can be traded. Uh, no, it's it's like a ghost town. It's not like a ghost town. Like, oh my God, it's got to fall down to thirty. I'm saying it's just a ghost town, and that it's just back end hedge flow to guys that are spreading uh, earlier on in the curve. 
So if you're trying to figure out interest rates, for the love of God, and you're a stock trader, don't look at TLT. <laughs> okay, I would recommend SOFR. But regardless, that's our thoughts now. After CPI, after PPI, after the last few months that we've been talking, that's where we come out. I, I Forget rate cuts. Rate cuts to me just sounds silly. And I know there are some guys out there talking about rate hikes to battle inflation that's still sticking. I don't see how they do it with the Fed language guidance in an election year. And I'm not being political. I'm just saying I just don't see how the Fed has given all this language guidance on rate cuts and then they raise the hike. I see the argument for the rate hike. I trust you, me. I'd see the argument for the rate hike. But I, I just don't see it happening. So not an election year. Not with the guidance that they've already given. So just a couple of quick charts. That has been what it's been. That's simply been our thoughts, which are always good until canceled, like the order type. Just GTC, good till canceled. And they have simply been our thoughts. Any questions, comments, please post them below. And that has been our thoughts, not yours, for whatever the heck day it is. As always, stay safe, trade well, and remember that love doesn't cost a dime.